Okay, we've written some categories, we've written some entries out, like so, and uh, I've decided I'm going to get, actually get rid of the frame number column. I, I don't, I've never actually really needed it nor used it. So I think, all I really care about is i got some frames, I can see their times, and I can kind of hunt down the culprit frame, or the culprit piece of data that is taking too long, which part of my code is taking too long. That's all I'm interested in. So now we're just down to the categories and the actual samples like so. And then I noticed uh, as I was reviewing the last video I did, um, this should be my initialize. Uh, this should be my initialize and then this should be my shut down like so. And let's actually go define these functions so we don't get linker errors. Uh, shift all that. Shift tab. Uh, prof hey, you know what? Actually, alt drag straight down and then profiler colon colon and then at the end of these, I'm actually going to use a macro to do this quickly. Well, I don't know. This might be longer. Control shift R to record a macro and key, backspace key, enter curly, enter curly, enter down arrow, home key just to be safe and put the cursor back at the beginning of the next line. Click stop and then control shift P to play it, P to play it, P to play it. Now, all of our functions are defined for profiler. That should terminate our linker errors we would have received. I'm going to save all files. Okay, we have all the entries. We have what we think our profile files should look like. And so let's parse this data out and uh, be sure that, that what, we ex what we wrote or feel that should be written is actually written. Um, we're going to need to open the file that the profiler will, will write its data to. So let's pound include fstream. I'm going to using standard ifstream. And we could have a huge, large religious debate. Or fstream's better, or c file type's better, q files, any kind of API you want. I'm just rolling with this standard C streams, no big deal here. And then I'm going to say ifstream input. And I need to give it the name of the file that the profiler will write its data to. And it looks like we need to come up with a way to define that data. So let's say const char star profile file name gets, I'll call it profiles.csv for comma separated file. Copy that. We're going to pa paste it and send it to initialize so the profiler knows where to write its data to. Uh, let's go back to the initialize method by clicking on it and hitting F12 and const char star file name. We're not going to implement these functions right now because we are doing test driven development. What do I call it? File name? File name. Save. Control Shift F S to save all. Uh, profile tests. I think we're done with the GL window. Well, and I'll keep that up. Okay. So input, well, I want to open up the file that the profiler just wrote all of its data to. And then data by data, I want to go and verify that what we wrote out uh, or what we expect to be written out is what's actually written out by the profiler. So I'm actually going to take this data and just paste it into Notepad real quick. Because even though Excel's nice and we're going to eventually use Excel to see our resulting data. I want to actually just see the raw data as it would show up in a text file. So here's Notepad. I'm going to paste that data in painstakingly. Put the commas in here like so. Now there's an implicit new line at the end of this line uh, that could either be, depending on your platform, uh, backslash R or backslash N or a combination of both. But I, for purposes of what we're doing, I'm going to stick with backslash n, um, simply because it's the easiest thing to do, or at least in my opinion for now. Okay, input. So we need, basically, these are what we call token, or tokens, or lexical tokens, a fancy way of saying, hey, this is a token, and then they get a comma, and then here's another token, and then there's a comma, and then there's another token, and then there's a new line, and then there's another token. So we got a couple of headaches. One, um, we got to get the tokens. Two, they can be separated either by commas or by new lines. 
All right now there's built-in functions like stir toke you can look up str toc it's a c function allows you to do some tokenizing you can look in the boost libraries they have a tokenizer class but i don't necessarily feel like i want to pull down the whole entire boost library and add it quite yet uh will we eventually maybe but I'm not feeling that adding the entire boost library just to get a tokenizer is the best idea. Yeah, let's 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 write some code that let's do something quick and dirty. It's probably going to be the most inefficient way to pull tokens out of a file, but we're going to do it. Um, and if it turns out that it's a headache and it's taking too much of our testing time, we can refactor it to something a little more slick. And uh, but chances are we won't. But if we do, we these are unit tests, and we can know immediately whether we screwed something up or not. That's kind of a nice thing. If you ask me a little bit of the book of Jamie, yeah, we're writing unit tests to beat up our our uh, profiler or anything that we're writing unit tests for. But really what we're doing is we're kind of writing the same logic in two different ways, and we're verifying that the logic, uh, the two separate types of logic, give us the same results. So it's kind of a way to double check ourselves. So yeah, these are the unit tests, but that's it's also kind of the same logic. Anyway, I'm rambling. String using standard string. String get next token. Input file stream reference the file. And basically, the purpose of this function is to pull out the characters one by one. Again, the least efficient way of doing this, but we're going to look at the characters one by one. If we see a comma or a new line, we know we have our current token. So, char c string buff, maybe buffer, oh, return buff. Oh, you know what, I actually like to call these ret. Okay. And then I'm going to say while true, control u, while true, Hmm, the file. Hey, let's grab the next character from the file. If that character is equal to a comma, or it's equal to a new line, then we know we're done with that token. Break, and we shall return. Uh, otherwise, oh, really? Let's see, there we go. Uh, otherwise, ret plus equals c. Okay, now this is <laughs> if you realize all the dynamic memory allocations and stuff that string has to do in the background to do this kind of operation, you'd probably choke when you saw that. But if you don't, hey, be happy. Whatever, it works. Again, we could come back and refactor this something better if, we want, if, if I want. So now, I remember, here's our file. The first thing we should see is category 1, category 2, category 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so on and so forth. So let's, uh, let's do that. We got input here, and I call it profile, profiler. And then I'm going to say input, or no, 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 string token. Token gets get next token, is that what I called it? Input, and then expect equal, equal token, and the first token should be category one. All right, now, hopefully you're good enough to realize, hey, this is a char star and a string. Those are not identical types. Yeah, but string has a conversion operator that will convert this to a string object for me. So, anyway, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, you know what? I don't think I need to really store it in a temporary. Couldn't I just do this? So control X, Control Shift L, delete that line because I don't want to overwrite what I just cut. And then Control V. Very nice. So get the next token input that returns a string object, and this char star will be converted to a string object. So some overhead there, but anyway, that's uh, I don't want to worry about the overhead right now. I want to get my unit tests working, and I can deal with overhead later if it becomes a problem. So the first three tokens should be category one, two, and three, and then we should see zero, one, two, three, all the way up to fourteen. Well, we have a constant value that's just perfect for that. So I'm going to say four unsigned int i get zero i less than num entries i plus plus and then down here i want to say expect equal i 
or no, no, get next token. Let's be consistent with what we're doing up here. We'll get next token first. Get next token. Input uh, I. All right now. This shouldn't compile, but maybe it would. Can you think of why this won't compile? I'm just looking at this profile. Is initialize? Did we not make it take a char star? Yeah, we did. IntelliSense just hasn't caught up with this. Um, can you think of why this line, or at least I, Jamie, would not think that this should compile? Pause the video. Think about it. I'm going to hit Control shift b Build started. Oh, errors. We got warnings. And then I think this is the one. Yeah, this is the one I was expecting. I'm comparing a string. Well, it says you're, you know, we're comparing a string, but then it's not talking about the, the int. Basically, I'm trying to compare a string to an int. And that's not good. I have to convert these individual tokens to ints. Or I have to convert this to a string. Pick my poison. Which one should we do? Flip a coin. Let's go. Let's take our string and convert it to an int. I think that might be a little uh, less runtime overhead. Even though I'm preaching constantly not to worry about the runtime overhead, but worry about the maintainability of the code. Uh, I think in this case, it's sixes. So let's do that. I'm going to say... Oh, there's 101 ways to convert a string to an int. Uh, let's just use some of the built-in standard ways. I'm going to say string buff gets get next token. Also, I wanted to point out, I was using a macro. If you remember, I had this code all the way like this. And I was using a macro without curly braces around it. And that could get hairy for macro kind of, kind of reasons. Um, but I'll explain that later when we do the assertion part of our... When we start writing our own macros, that'll probably be in the assertions area uh, videos. We'll see how macros can bite you. Anyway, string, let me bring that back up. String buff gets get next token, control X, control V, and I'm going to say unsigned, unsigned. Why do I keep saying unsigned? Um, generally, I like to go unsigned when we're doing iteration loops. Why? It's probably something stupid that I do, because 99% of the time you'll just see int. But for me, if you're iterat iterating from 0 on through a positive numbers, that's an unsigned iteration. So that's why I keep typing unsigned up here. But but maybe I'll just... I'm going to use A to I here. If you've seen A to I, that's a standard C function. I hit F12 on it. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get. Here we go. So it's expecting a char star, and it's going to return an int. So let's just go, let's go signed, just to be consistent with what we're comparing with, with the return value from A to I. So I'm going to expect equal uh, A to I, and buff, give it a pointer to your underlying character array. So what A to I to do, <laughs> say that 10 times, what A to I will do is take the underlying C character array, which is just uh, the string. Hopefully you know that the standard string is just a wrapper around character C character arrays. So C underscore str returns a const char star pointer. It's a pointer to the underlying data that the string, is ma string object is managing for you. A to I will look into that buffer. Uh, figure out what that is as far as an integer goes, return that value here, and then we will compare that value against i. Now i is going 0 to num entries, which are the exact same values we sent to the profiler to keep track of. So hopefully this uh, expect equals test will work for us. Control shift b let's see if we build. Error, no object, conversion from int to... F oh yeah. So remember, we have uh, the compiler set right now. If there's a warning, it won't compile. So we're considering warnings as bad as compiler errors, which is another religious debate. But but for now, we're just going to roll with it. And um, it's saying, hey, you're passing an int where a float's expected, and, and a float can't represent all values of an unsigned int. So it's worried about that. So I'm just going to cheat and say float. And that should solve that problem. But then when we pull them out, we'll just pull them out as ints because we know that we're only doing integral numbers. We're only doing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're not doing like 
0, 0 0.8, 1 1.2, that kind of thing. Control Shift B, build. Uh, linker errors. Lots and lots of linker errors. So that's complaining because we declared in Profiler, we declared all these functions, but we never defined them here. Oh, we did define them. Oh, <laughs> can you think of what's wrong? Can you think of what's wrong? Pause the video, think about it. Okay, hopefully you're right. We need to go back to our header file here, and we need to say declaration specification DLL export. Export this. Make this visible from the engine project so that other projects like the tester and the sandbox game can consume the profiler. Control Shift B. Build succeeded. Okay, I'm going to run this. What do you expect to happen? Lots of green and we're hung. Any idea why? <laughs> Any idea why? Uh, Control C, break out of this. Let's uh, pause the video. Think about it. why are we hung? Why are we hung? I actually uh, wasn't expecting to hang myself, but I fought with it for a while. I figured it out and edited this video. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll confess. Uh, let's go back to the test here. You see we got this while true, and then we read something in. And we're looking for this com and this backslash n. And as long as we don't get those, we're just going to read, 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 read. Buffer, 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 blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, you know what? The the uh, file, when we said uh, open up this profile file name thing, um, that file doesn't even exist. Remember, we haven't even written our test yet. So that's kind of the advantage of writing the tests first, is I'm getting the bugs out of the test, and then I get to go and do the implementation and find even more bugs in my test and find even more bugs in my implementation. Yada, yada, yada. We need something here to say, hey, um, if, the file's, if, if the file's not in a state that it can be read, then forget it. This is, this is going to go on forever. So we need to say, well, the file is good. Keep reading data, keep reading data, keep reading data until you see a comma or a backslash n. All right, let's control five, see if this works. Boom, we have failed tests. Very cool, and the tests also complete execution, which is nice. So now we can go to our profiler and start actually implementing the code to make this happen.